Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discover College Soccer. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Coach Brandon Levine from Felician University in northern New Jersey. Welcome, Coach. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to, to hear about everything. Yeah, thanks for being here. Well, we're, we're going to hear from you and, and really kind of dig into uh, to what you guys are doing over there because uh, I think what I was just saying, I, I you know, I'm actually not aware of Felician that, that well. Um, I've, I've driven... Uh, the turnpike right there through Rutherford, uh, Rutherford several times and been to the Meadowlands, but, uh, but yeah. that's about it. So, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll skip that, the, the geography stuff, people can find that yeah. out on their own. Uh, but let's talk more uh, about the, 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 the sports side of things and then the school side of things. So uh, let's talk recruiting first. So, you know, as a division two school tomorrow is the magic June 15th day. So I'm sure you've got your list ready as to, to who you're calling, but what, when do you really start looking at players, putting them on a list, kind of uh, wanting to see what they're about? Yeah, I mean, it's an exciting time. You know, this is kind of my first recruiting cycle through at the Division II level prior to being a Division III coach. So definitely the timelines jump-started, you know, accelerated, especially for the domestic guys. So um, sophomore year, junior year, you know, that's kind of the transitional phase where we're starting to look. Fall sophomore year is when we start looking. And then we start, you know, obviously the contact, you know, kind of fall of the junior year. Um, is really kind of our timeline where we get to know people um, on a more personal versus, you know, hey, is this kid a good kid? Is this kid a good student kind of phase of thing? So um, it's definitely an earlier phase, you know, for Division Two. And now that, you know, after COVID, it's definitely a different timeline for everybody. But that's generally our kind of beginning of the process, if you will. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you know, just out of curiosity, how many inbound contacts do you think you get in, let, I know we'll call it an average week. I know it ebbs and flows with tournaments and times a year and all that kind of stuff, but, yeah. but just an idea of, of what you're, you're dealing with of people that are contacting you interested in the program. Yeah. If I'd average out per week, I mean, obviously at a division two level, we're getting a ton of internationals between agencies and, um, you know, random ones as well. You know, if I had a rounded number, I would say generally around a hundred a week, wow. you know, wow. we're, 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 we're getting, and that's on a, that's on a light week, you know, prior to, you know, some of the big fall events between Bethesda, you know, Castle, EDP, PDA, all those kinds of events, you know, it's generally going to boost up a little bit. And, and that kind of, what I found was that October to kind of February phase for us, you know, between commitments and whatnot, we were getting a ton. Um, and a lot of internationals, probably about a 60, 40 split for us between internationals versus domestics. Um, so a lot what? of emails. Let's talk, well, let's talk about internationals a bit. Like, so how does that fit into your overall recruiting, um, you know, kind of scheme and, and, and how tough is it for you? Cause you know, I, I'm guessing Felician isn't paying for you to, uh, go, go spend a week, uh, in Spain or something, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I wish you were wrong. If you were wrong, that'd be nice. Uh, no, but you know, every, every school at our levels, you know, restricted budget wise, division right. two and division one level, right. You can only go so many places and see right. so many kids on a serious note. So it's one of those where, you know, obviously recruiting contacts and, you know, prior players that you played with, prior coaches, this, that, and the other thing, you have to lean heavy on. I mean, we're every person, I wouldn't want to say division one level so much, but division two level, you're making scholarship offers sight unseen. I mean, obviously between highlights and full match film, you're trying to do your due diligence, but, um, you know, our international, you know, we have a couple of really good points of contact, a couple of people I really trust. And I'm, I'm one of those people, I'm a very much, what have you done for me lately kind of person. So I trust these people until I don't, um, you know, it, it's very much, I wouldn't say it's a crapshoot, but Hey, we're, you know, we're hoping we have a good eye. We're hoping we see, you know, for us, for internationals, we're seeing two to three full matches minimum um, before, you know, sending out any offers. And that's after highlight tapes, that's after reference checks, that's after transcripts, this, that, and the other thing. So um, it's a lengthy process, but, you know, at the division two level, if you look at, you know, the, the teams of all Americans, it's, 80% internationals, if not more. So, you know, it, it, the, the, the rules are there to set up for you to be successful with internationals. So um, we're trying to do our best in that, uh, in that regard. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, well, in terms of domestic, you know, you mentioned some of the things, P PDA, Bethesda, et cetera. Where, where are those key places you like to, to go to make sure that, you know, you're, you're seeing whatever players you can? Yeah, I guess I'm in a unique situation, or maybe some other people in a similar situation, but I coach at Cedar Stars Academy um, in Bergen, so I, I'm, I'm at those events I'm with my oh, club nice. team, so I, I'd like to say I have a little bit more of a grasp versus maybe some other people in terms of, you know, what's out there, um, you know, what the contacts are, what the best events. Um, but for us, you know, and at the Division Two level, I'm living in, you know, 50 to 60 mile radius generally with my domestic guys um, between some of the big MLS academies. I mean, 
TSF, Cedar Stars Bergen, uh, and Cedar Stars Monmouth at U19. We had three teams within a 30-mile radius qualify for MLS playoffs for next. So um, I don't have to drive very far to see some of the best soccer in the nation, truthfully. So I lean on the showcases, but I'm leaning on more of my, uh, my contacts coming yeah. in the surrounding areas. Well, you what about camps? How do they fit into your overall recruiting? Are you doing any at your school? Do you work other teams camps? How does that kind of help you in your recruiting process? Yeah. You know, I, I've been on the job only trying to even do the math, uh, well, not even a year. So it's one of those situations where we haven't gotten to ID camps yet. There's been so much, so many other, you know, you know, kind of things that have been prioritized before that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing a couple of the big camps between future 500, uh, um, you know, a couple of, you know, you know, some of the exact camps, I'm sorry, a couple of them are probably escaping, but we're doing some of the big events and a part, a part of it's to get noticed. Just like yeah. you said, when we opened the chat, Hey, Felician's not the biggest name school in the world. And I'm not, there's no hiding that yeah. it's a matter of, Hey, can I get my name out there at the university level? Can I get my name out there as a coach and show that, Hey, somebody at this university knows what they're talking about. Um, and, and a lot of these recruits are going to trust coaches. You know, a lot of people choose locations based on coaches even. Uh, so, you know, just about making those contacts and I'm not even worried about the networking with other coaches. I'm more so about when I go to recruiting events, I want to recruit, you know, a lot of people do other things, um, and, you know, have a lot of ch ch chat and stuff like that. I'm there to, I'm there to go to work and try to, try to meet as many kids as I can and put as many business cards in good people's hands as possible. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, well, when you're at camps or when you're at these, uh, other tournaments and things and you're, you're looking at players, what, what's kind of your your checklist, right? Your hierarchy of things you're looking for in a, in a player, whether that's on the field or off the field stuff. Yeah, we just, I go through a, a very, very crystal clear three-step process to kind of start it. You know, we're looking for good people. Um, I think that's the number one thing, you know, any coach might say, or hopefully would say, I'm looking for a good person. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm looking for somebody that's going to be early to practice, help out community service, wants to do the stuff off the field versus just being a player. And then number two, I'm looking for a good student. You know, if he's not going to meet the, you know, the eligibility center requirements, and our, you know, you know, enrollment requirements. There's no point. I don't. He could be the best player in the world. It doesn't matter to me. Um, and then on the, on the third step, we're looking for, you know, obviously good players at the end of the day that fit our system. I think a lot of coaches and a lot of people get confused. And you know, this kid's a really good center mid. But you have eight good center mids already in your team. And I've been talking to that about my assistants and other coaches. Um, I need people that fit the system of play that we're going to play. So that's, you know, that's kind of where we're at in terms of what I look for. Um, the first thing I look for when I when I get to a field is. Hey, who's the voice? You know, who's the dictator? Who's the guy who's wearing the armband or the metaphorical armband in terms of dictating things? I, I challenge my assistants for this first recruiting class to bring in as many captains as humanly possible. You know, I think it's, it's an inherent trait that, you know, if we can get as many leaders as we can in the room, we're going to be in a better room in a, in a year or two. No, that's, that's a, that's a good way to look at it. Um, you know, a minute ago, you, you mentioned the, the whole offering scholarships part, you know, that's one big thing, all players and parents especially are wondering what the finances look like and uh, what is it, you know, obviously I don't need specifics here, but in terms of Felician, what, what does the whole financial aid package look like from an athletic standpoint, from an academic standpoint, how does it all work together and what, what can an average player that's coming in, uh, you know, look at when they're looking at the financial aid side? Yeah, it definitely varies. I mean, as I'm sure, you know, most people would say, you know, we're about 48, 51 between that range all in. That's between, you know, meals, housing, um, and tuition. Um, you know, obviously we're a private four years. So, you know, the usually state school guys, you know, they're not going to get that state school price, but we are pretty pretty uh, flexible with our academic aid. Um, you know, we are in a position where we can stack scholarships to a certain extent. Um, so we have a little bit of flexibility in terms of making really competitive packages um, for kids. So, you know, the general, the average, you know, cost per student is 17,000. So, um, you know, obviously significantly less than the 50 at the top end. So um, I think we're in a position to be really competitive in the New York, New Jersey region, you know, price-wise, football-wise, and academically. So it, it, it seems like it's a really exciting time at Felicia. No, that's, that's great. Um, well, let's shift a little bit then and talk about the school itself. Uh, since, like I said, we don't, we don't know all that about it. And I know you've only been there a year, but, you know, besides what I can find clicking around the website, you know, give me the, the inside scoop, the nuts and bolts of what makes, uh, what makes Felicia unique. Yeah, I, I think it's a unique situation. I mean, at the Division Two level, it's a lot of smaller schools, smaller scale. You know, I like to call our community a tight-knit family, you know, within the athletics department, within the university itself. Um, call it 2,500 students. Um, it's about 70% female. It actually used to be an all-female school. Um, so I like, you know, incoming, you know, 
male student athletes, we have a 70%, you know, girl ratio, you know, in terms of, you know, it, it, any, any kind of, any kind of move to move the needle in our direction, we're going to do it. Um, you know, we're about eight miles west of New York City, um, three or four miles, five miles um, from Hoboken, New Jersey. So we're right near some major metropolitan areas that open up doors off the pitch, on the pitch. There's a lot of semi-professional NPSL, USL to Nisa nations. There's tons of football release, relief um, in, in the areas around us for spring, summer, uh, and post-grad opportunities. So it's really unique kind of off the pitch, you know, for the football stuff. Um, or on the pitch, excuse me, and then the off the pitch, I think the internship opportunities, and it's it's a good spin for a lot of the internationals. You know, they want to be near a major metropolitan city and nothing better than New York City. Um, you know, our downtown area is about two blocks away from campus, and, you know, it's it, it's 450 for a direct bus tra- bus ride right into, right into Times Square. So um, if you're looking for those off the field, on the field, a good balance of both, um, I think Felician gives it to a lot of those internationals and a lot of the domestic guys that are looking to, you know, take their take their step up away from maybe playing Division three or playing club or whatever they may be doing. Um, and then on the academic side, we have kind of four big schools. We have a school of nursing that's pretty pretty renowned, uh, arts and sciences, education, and then our business centers. So um, it's it's an exciting time. You know, we've just built a multi million dollar uh, wellness and recreation center on campus. It's basically the basement's a huge uh, food hall, the main floor, brand new gym, brand new training room, brand new meeting rooms, brand new VIP suites. Uh, then the top floor is a brand new kind of student population gym, um, studios, workout areas and stuff like that. So basically when we're in preseason, your first day there, like we eat, we go work out. Uh, you know, we're, we're in a one building kind of situation where it's, it's really cool. And that's what we tell a lot of the kids where it's, you know, if you're looking for open fields and prairies and, you know, deer, deer running around <laughs> and, and stuff along that nature you know, Felician's not it, you know, we're in a, an urban, urban environment where it's, you know, it's a city like, it's a city like feel, it's a super safe environment, Rutherford, if, if you don't know, downtown Rutherford's like extremely nice, you know, great restaurants and stuff to do, so it's, uh, I think it's very attractive on a lot of levels versus a lot of Division two schools, uh, especially some of the competition that we have. Yeah, I, uh, I think my old college roommate lives uh, next door and was at Lindhurst uh, or something right there, so. Yeah, they, yeah, he, Lindhurst, he, brilliant. He raves about it. So I, that, that's, I can see that. Well, I mean, you did mention, you know, some of the great, uh, the new building and stuff. So, but in terms of on the academic side, you know, what, how do students there really kind of balance that uh, academic and athletics, what kind of support systems are there to help them as they transition into college? Yeah. I mean, on the men's soccer side, I'll speak to that first. We have mandatory study hall hours for the guys. Um, and that's all incoming players. That's all players below a 3.0. And we're playing with that scale year by year, you know, in terms of lowering it, uh, you know, elevating it and whatnot. Um, you know, our compliance people do a fantastic job in terms of using Starfish system, meaning basically you're inputted as a student athlete. And then if, you know, if, this, if the, the instructor basically says that you're struggling or says there's any issues, um, it's flagged by, you know, our compliance people, the compliance person, my, who went over the coaches, meets with that student athlete almost, you know, within a 48-hour window. And we can nip, stiff in, nip stuff in the bud that maybe – you know, the general population students aren't getting that resource, which I think is fantastic. Um, and, you know, some of the on-campus, you know, counseling and the on-campus, you know, tutoring that we have to offer through the athletic center um, and through the athletics department in, in general, I think it's, it just streamlines the process. That's what I would tell anybody out of high school, you know, being in the student population, you have, you have access to those things, but as being a student athlete, everything's just streamlined. The whole process gets moving just a little bit quicker. Um, and we get to help you out. And I think the biggest thing I, I like to tell people, our campus versus maybe others, you got people that really care here. And I know how cliche and stupid that sounds, but you have people that are really hands-on. Everybody knows your name for better or for worse. Um, and it's really an environment that, you know, if, if, you, if you like people, if you, if you like being helped, if you like, uh, you know, really interpersonal relationships and getting to know people and not just being a number, hey, we're an attractive place that's going to help you out academically. Uh, that's awesome. Um, so for, you know, every, every school is different in terms of when they practice and how they travel and when classes are and all and how classes are set up. So what would a, I know there's no such thing as typical, but what would a typical week look like for a player during season in terms of when they wake up and go to class and eat and practice and all that kind of thing? Yeah. I mean, this past season was kind of a nominally for us because I was basically given the job about two weeks before season. We kind of had this set schedule that I looked at and I'm like, I really wish this was in pencil, not pen. Right. Uh, but there was no movement. But for this season, this typical, what we have told the guys is in the AM, get your classes done. I'm, I'm trying to be as straightforward as that. Get the classes done in the morning as early as you can. 
pack the schedule in the morning because, you know, our travel is always going to be in the evening, you know, in terms of away games and stuff like that. So we always say stack your schedule as much as you can, um, you know, around 12 to one, you know, is where we have our initial meetings or anything like that. Just kind of send out the session plans and stuff along those lines. We generally train from around two to four. Um, and, and, and again, I like being totally honest. We train about three miles off campus, you know, in an urban environment like us, you know, we don't have our own field at our fingertips. So basically we prepare, you know, video locker room and everything on campus. And then the, the assistant coaches basically shuttle us or shuttle the students, you know, to sites um, and, and, you know, make sure we're organized along those lines, two to four in terms of our training sessions. Um, and then, you know, obviously the evenings are your own, um, you know, about 70% of our guys, you know, live on campus really at the end of the day. So it's one of those situations where, um, you know, we have a really good environment um, to kind of be successful, you know, off the pitch and, you know, get that academic kind of balance, um, you know, just like my dogs provided me a little bit of good balance. I, I, I swear, but, but a, week, all- a week for us, yeah, don't yeah. worry, uh, a week for us is generally, I like to call it, and I like to tell all the high school kids and especially the internationals, it's, it, it's heavy. You know, we basically have Monday practice, Tuesday prepare, Wednesday match, Thursday recovery, Friday prepare, Saturday match. Sunday yeah. off. Right. That's a typical week for us. It's not okay. as black and white as you can. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so let's talk a little bit then more about about the team and the soccer side of things as, as, as you know, when it comes to that. Do you have a, a roster size that you're looking to hit every year? In terms of if, if you're asking about, you know, from administration, no. Okay. If you're asking me myself, I always have a number. I, a little, a little bit of both. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just take care of this dog's ball and I'll keep talking. It's one of those situations where, you know, for us, we want to hit enough to play 11 v 11 daily, right? I mean, that that's, I mean, that's probably any coach's rule of thumb in terms of, you know, the accessibility and the stuff that they want to do. Um, my number in my head is 28. That's always the number I want to hit. I don't know why, I don't know how, but 28 is generally around 11 v 11 plus four or five for injuries. And that's where we're at. Um, this season, this upcoming season, we're going to carry, I think it's 33 is the number we're at. Um, it just ended up there. You know, yeah. if I keep finding kids who, and I have jerseys, and it, it's $100 to fill their jersey plus whatever money for preseason, <laughs> you start thinking about, hey, is this kid worth that money? You know, right. I think a lot of coaches will say that. And if a kid's good enough, I'm, I'm going to take him. I don't care if it's August, you know, 5th, whatever yeah. it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and, and if, honestly, if you, so I think I've interviewed, you know, almost 60 college coaches across the board. And I would say, if you ask me, 28 is going to be that average across uh, everybody's uh, whenever I ask that question, unless, you know, some administrations hold them to a number, but I'd say yeah. most people would, is going to go with 28. Um, well, in terms of your style of coaching, your team style of play, you know, how, how would you describe that for anybody, you know? interested to see if maybe they're going to fit what, what you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm a, I'm a little bit Dutch and a little bit kind of Spanish at the same time in terms of, I like kind of possession with intent. So it's not kind of the pep ticky tock overplay, uh, possess just to possess. Um, you know, I like kind of a total football kind of idea in terms of, Hey, we have a guy who plays in the two or the right back for everybody that doesn't understand numbers, which I talk to recruits every day and somehow everybody's confused by numerical. Uh, so we have a guy who plays in the two, but if I, if I stick him in the 10, he understands the core principles and he's, in, and he's a good enough footballer tactically and mentally that he can kind of adjust and do a job. Is it going to be as good as my 10 would be? Probably not. Uh, but we play a high pressing, um, possession with intent system that likes dragging people out of their shape. Um, and I like changing our pressing system, you know, based on opponents, based on the temperature, based on my mood that day. Um, you know, we're not going to be just the press, 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 you know, Jurgen Klopp, you know, rock and roll type thing. Um, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to have ebbs and flows to the game. And, you know, at, the, at Division two or any collegiate level, uh, I think a lot of coaches need to understand that, you know, hey, we, you have your plan. But my, my I, I said it earlier, my plan's always in pencil. Yeah. Okay. Well, in terms of your off season, you know, we're, we're getting ready to hit summer here, but what, what would a typical off season program look like for, for your team? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're in it right now. So, um, you know, I'm giving the guys that we're on five days a week. Um, we have plyometric day, lower body and upper body kind of rest day, uh, cardio day. And then, uh, I think, you know, one thing maybe I'm doing differently that hopefully nobody copies by listening to this, we're doing like a challenge day. Um, so every week we're doing a, a challenge and basically you have to send in your, you know, a video, a time, you know, you with your, you know, your Fitbit or something along those lines. Um, and it's running, it's fitness, it's, it, it's fun stuff for, for a couple of them. So we're looking to push each other, which is what I told the captains, push each other. 
We're looking to have fun, get to know each other, all the above, looking to break that ice. So when we meet each other on day one with such a large recruiting class coming in, um, it's like you already know each other. Um, and, and I, and I want to make it competitive to the point where you're posting scores to the whole group and you're feeling comfortable enough to do that. So in the first couple of weeks, we're not doing it, but you know, by week three, you're posting your scores, you know, you're getting competitive with the person next to you. You can keep doing it all weekend. So if somebody beat your score, you can go do it again and try to beat them. And so it's a never ending kind of cycle of competing as football is. Oh, that's great. I, I love that idea, but I won't, I won't, I won't publicize it to, to anybody. I know, I know you're, I know you're editing this part. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've covered a lot of bases. We've talked about a lot of different things. So, you know, I always like to leave it on, on one last question and that's, you know, what didn't we cover? What, what else is out there that you want any prospects to know about the school, the team, your coaching, any, anything else like that, that, that you want to talk about? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I touched on in terms of good people, good students and, and good players. I think the, the biggest thing that I ask any recruit and I would urge any parent or recruit during the recruiting process, just be as honest as possible. You know, I sit there and I tell people that the whole time and you meet good people and you, you think they're going to be honest and upfront and, and they're not. You know, I think it's one of those situations where my most precious commodity probably is yours, probably is a lot of, you know, adults. My most precious commodity is time. If I'm wasting time on a recruit um, and I don't hear from him and he plays for Cedar Stars, you know, I think it's Cedar Stars a different way. And, and, and that's just me being honest. I don't think, and the same thing goes with a club coach who maybe gives a recommendation that's not accurate. Um, I think every, I think just being honest with yourself in the process, it, it's, it's difficult. Everybody thinks they're going to play at UNC and play in, you know, 25 games and be the guy. Um, but, hey, there's other outlets out there. And, 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 again, is it at Felicia? Is it at this school? Is it that school? Hey, you need to get your nose down into the process and really kind of see ground down, you know, really what's what. And the biggest thing, what I tell my club kids, um, beyond being honest, I, go see a team play. I think so many people don't do that, and it's ridiculous. And you don't ask for film. So a lot of coaches, and hey, myself included, we're going to paint the prettiest picture I can. Um, the picture is real when you're seeing it with your eyes, um, you know, unedited. So I, I would urge people to just be honest about the process and go see teams play. If you want to play, go see the team play. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's a great piece of advice, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to to hopefully taking in some games this fall. Uh, now that my daughter is going to be in high school, maybe we'll start taking a look and, and seeing some things. So, so she knows what's out there. But uh, well, coach, hey, I appreciate it. Wish you the best of luck uh, now that this you got a full year under your belt, uh, and uh, hopefully you can uh, you get that 33 man roster chugging along the way you want it, and and hopefully bringing home a conference title or something. So. Uh, really appreciate the time and we'll be in touch. No, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Thanks.